So here's the deal. You get into the game, create a character, create a world, and now you have to survive in this world while facing various challenges and bosses. Good day, fair Terrarians. I'm Foxes Pancakes, and welcome to a game review of Casual Caliber. Terraria, also known as the 2D Minecraft, is by far one of my most favorite games, and is actually the reason I got a Steam account to begin with back in 2011. Since then, I've amassed a puny 196 hours on this game, and yet after nearly 7 years and 8 combined days of my life that I've spent on this game, I still find myself coming back to it. Not because the gameplay differs greatly every time I play it, though. In fact, there are parts that feel rather dull like this bit. Then there's parts like this. But what really keeps me coming back to it all are the little goals that the game sets up for you, which is assisted by random generation of worlds. According to the Terraria wiki, there are seven main bosses, and in order of difficulty, they are the Eye of Cthulhu, Eater of Worlds, or Brain of Cthulhu, depending on whether you get the Corruption or Crimson, Skeletron, the Wall of Flesh, the Destroyer, the Twins, and Skeletron Prime. Each boss drops items that assist you greatly in your cause for defeating the next boss down the line. For example, when you defeat Skeletron, you unlock the dungeon which holds several incredibly powerful weapons and its golden chest, which you can then amass and equip to take down the Wall of Flesh. In a way, each boss sets you up to defeat the next main one, and even then, those aren't all of the main bosses. There's the King Slime, the Queen Bee, Plantera, Golem, Duke Fishron, and the Lunatic Cultist, and finally the most difficult boss in the game, the Moon Lord. Some people might consider the Moon Lord and Lunatic Cultist to be main bosses on their own, but I think that once you've defeated Skeletron Prime, that's pretty much the end of the game. Okay, so those... Oh, that's a pretty big area. I'll, I'll come back to it after I get to the end of this mine track cart here. Okay, so there's nothing back there. I'm gonna jump off here and... Fuck's sake! Now, I've talked about all of those bosses because I feel like they're major checkpoints in Terraria, but I haven't really talked about the rest of the game yet. The game itself doesn't look amazing in the sense of being as beautiful as the hand-drawn style of Pyre or as high quality and stylistic as something like Nier Automata or Horizon Zero Dawn. Its 16-bit style holds some charm and the creators have done really well to make this style look progressively better over time while keeping that same kind of retro feel. The text style, the sound effects, the weapons, the enemies, the sprites for each individual character, and the way that the bosses are drawn in and included in the game all feel like they fit. Never in the game do you ever feel like a certain character or thing feels stylistically out of place because this game lets you do, talk with, and wield all kinds of shit. Look, I have a minigun that's a cross between a shark and a minigun that fires bullets. Look, I have this dark magic weapon that I stole from a demon's body so that I can use it to kill other demons. Yeah, how do you like it, you little magic fleeing piece of shit? Taste your own fucking medicine right there! This sword? Well, let me combine the four elements of swords that a demon altered real quickly to create this sword. We have water, earth, fire, and I think this is meant to be the air, but it's corrupt. And when their powers combine, you get this sword that you're going to use on the next boss until you get a sword that deals better damage so you can beat the next boss with it, even if you want to use a sword with it. That's another thing that I like about this game. You can play it how you want to. Personally, I almost always go for the mage route, which I mostly use magic weapons to take everything out. When I get the upgrade armor, I try to go for the ones that give me more magic power. Other people might want more defense, prefer to go melee with their opponents, while others might use guns or bows to fight, and the game allows each of these character choices to flourish and progress. Now, I'm not sure if this is a result of me having played the game too much, but there have been times where I'm trying to get one specific item. Let's say I want to make Hellstone armor by mining it from the Underworld, but I haven't got to the Underworld yet. So then I know I have to press right control, get my pickaxe loaded up, and tape down my primary click button. It's going to take me an eternity for me to dig all the way down to Hell. It's moments like those that make the game less fun and tedious at times, even if I have the small world selected. Like I said before, though, this is like the 2D version of Minecraft, and if you're not ready for moments where you have to explore and mine like crazy, then you're not going to be ready for this game. However, this game differs from Minecraft when it comes to combat and boss options. I've already covered the bosses, so I'm just going to talk about the mobs that spawn throughout the world. In Minecraft, you have 23 hostile monsters. Count them. 23. Terraria has, uh, so, pretty hard mode enemies, uh-huh, of course, hard mode enemies, and, hmm. Oh, right, ah, event enemies, too. Uh, those are important. I'll include boss servants, too, in this count, because they're like event enemies in my eyes. Right! 202 enemies, 202 creatures are out there constantly spawning for you to kill and in turn they are trying to kill you. That's a lot of combat. That's a lot of damage! In regards to my experience with Terraria, I rate this game a solid 8 out of 10. Its visuals are consistent, its gameplay is engaging, and it keeps pulling suckers like me back into its 16-bit embrace. 
Thank you guys so much for watching, and I hope you guys have a great day, night, or space cycle, depending on when and where you watch this video, and I will see you all on the flip side. Goodbye.